Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey at the JX Fight Club in Shanghai, China. Today we have a question from our friend Victor, and also from Vlad, and from about 200 other subscribers who have asked me, Ramsey, what do you think about combat sambo, Russian sambo? What's your opinion? Short answer, I think it's cool. I love it. Now here's the longer answer. Since China, where I live, is very close to Russia and all these Eastern Bloc countries where Sambo is practiced, I've had a ton of experience training with Sambo fighters. Sambo fighters come here all the time to train. And it's great because these guys are great athletes. They're fun to train with. They know how to fight. They know how to spar. They know how to train. And it's great. And another thing I love when Russians come to my gym is that they always bring their friends. And their friends always tell their friends. And so if you can, if, if a couple of Russians come, I'm always excited, like, sweet, the class is going to triple in size in a month. So my Russian friends, if you are watching and you're in the area, please come train with us at the JX Fight Club. We'd love to have you here. So what's so different about Sambo? Well, if you don't know what it is, it's a combat sport that is very similar to mixed martial arts. You can punch, you can kick, you can grapple. You can do takedowns, you can work submissions on the ground. It's good stuff. Now, it's a little different because Sambo fighters wear a jacket. They wear a jacket similar to a judo jacket or a jiu-jitsu jacket. The shoulders are a little different. There's a pleat there that you can grab, and so there are a few different uniform-specific techniques you can do that are not possible in judo or jiu-jitsu. So, what is so special about Sambo? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's not the Russian Sambo, it's the Russians. Fyodor Emelianenko, he published a book with Victory Belt Publishing. You know, those guys who did Mastering the Rubber Guard, Freddy Bravo, and Mastering Triangle Chokes with Neil Melanson. And they publish all these books, these uh, very well-illustrated books showing techniques from multiple angles, full-color illustrations, good stuff. And when I found out that they were doing a book with Fedor, I got really excited. So I rushed to the bookstore, I bought the book, I came home, opened it up, and what did I see? Basic punches, basic kicks, basic takedowns, basic submissions. What? This book seems really basic, I thought. Did I just waste my money? Well, no, it's actually a really great book. But what stood out to me was the introduction. At the beginning of the book, Fyodor says, in this book, I will teach you the techniques that I have used to win fights. But I cannot teach you the Russian work ethic. What is this Russian work ethic that he was speaking of? Well, I've asked many of my Russian friends over the years, what is this Russian work ethic? And they shrug like, what, what Russian work ethic? I don't know what that means. But since training with them, I've learned exactly what that means. Russians are different. Different than what? Well, different than Americans, different than most other Westerners in their approach to training and their approach to life and their, their mentality. To them, it's very normal. To Americans, we see that we're like, whoa, you guys, you're training at a different level. You're training in a different way. I had a student from Russia, a guy named Hikamat, a few years back, and he was a guy about my age, and we both grew up at the tail end of the Cold War. And the Cold War in Russia, how it affected the citizens there, was a little bit different than the way it affected the citizens in the United States. In the U.S., I remember there was this, um, there was propaganda anti-Russian, anti-communist propaganda. And it was taught in school, subtly, but it was there. It's basically the, the Russians are bad, communists are bad, they're trying to nuke us. We must be aware, we must be wary. But for the most part, life just went on as normal. We didn't really suffer socioeconomically. Meanwhile, in Russia, it's a little bit different. And we got some dudes having a yelling match over there for some reason. Anyway. Meanwhile, in Russia, my friend Hikamat said this, as a child, 
we had no toys, we had no games. And so, for fun, we would go to my friend's house and fight in the basement. You know, for fun, as one does. Six-year-olds, bare-knuckle fighting in the basement, for fun. Meanwhile, in America, what were we doing for fun? I don't know, playing tag, playing baseball, playing with Transformers, G.I. Joe's. It's a different animal, man. It's a different animal. Socioeconomic necessity can, can compel you to do some interesting things. A lot of people ask me, what got you into fighting? And I'll tell you, socioeconomic necessity. I needed an extra paycheck. That's why. That's why I started uh, professional kickboxing initially. And as an extension, mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, Sanda, K1 fighting, all, all that other pro fighting. Why? I needed an extra paycheck. So, man, socioeconomic necessity in Russia definitely helped shape the culture. Made those dudes tough. And a lot of them don't even realize how tough they are. I had this student from Russia. This dude was an amazing wrestler. Just absolutely amazing wrestler. Really strong, really athletic, really explosive, really fast. And one day I, I paid him a simple compliment. I said, your wrestling's really good. And he said, no, 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 no. It is normal. It is not good. It is just normal, he said. And then I realized where he was coming from. In Russia, there are some incredible wrestlers. Some of the best wrestlers on the planet Earth come from that country. And so him, again, being, being a cut above average, to me, being an amazing wrestler, to him, that's, that's normal. That's the average guy. Now I realize not everybody in Russia wrestles. I've, I've met a few Russians who didn't know anything about fighting. But I've met a whole lot more who do. I think outside of America, a lot of people in the combat sports community tend to look at Americans as good wrestlers. And a lot of Americans don't know anything about wrestling. But here's what's different about America as far as wrestling goes versus a lot of other countries, China in specific. In China, unless you have been handpicked to train at the Olympic Training Center or train in a sports university, you don't wrestle. There's no opportunity for that. There's no wrestling in high school. There's no wrestling at the average college unless it is a sports university specifically. Meanwhile, in America, you can wrestle in high school. You can wrestle in junior high. Sometimes they even offer it in elementary school. There's wrestling in college. So if you want to wrestle in America, you can do it. There's a venue for that. So as a result, per capita, the United States has a lot more wrestlers than China and many other countries. And these Eastern Bloc countries, they're a little bit different. I got a ton of students from Kazakhstan. I had a ton of students from Kazakhstan over the years, and they all knew how to wrestle. They all knew sambo. They all knew how to fight. And I remember having a conversation with, with one of these dudes from Kazakhstan, and I, I said, why is that? Why is everybody from your country just really good at fighting? And he paused, and he was like, I don't know, it's, it's normal. I was like, well, why is it normal? Because this is not normal in many other countries. He said, well, we have public wrestling program. There are public gyms where you can go and learn how to wrestle and box and that sort of thing. It's normal, he said. They, they like using that word, normal. What an interesting world it would be if it was normal everywhere to learn how to wrestle, to learn how to box, to learn how to fight, to learn how to live in your own skin and use your own body. That would be amazing, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Get out there and train.